Well, greetings and salutations, good people of the internet. My name is Big Lou, and welcome to my workshop, specifically the other side of the workshop. I don't show this part of the workshop uh, a whole lot, at least in talking points, because, well, there's not really a whole lot to look at, except for the garage door, which is the focus of this week's video. Uh, this week I'm going to be insulating the garage door, and that is because a couple of weeks ago I installed my uh, DIY air conditioning mini split, and a bunch of people have commented, both here and on Instagram, and follow me on Instagram if you're not, it's just Big Loose Workshop, at Big Loose Workshop, however you want to say it. Anyway, that I need to insulate the garage door, and it's just been, the comments have just kept pouring in and pouring in and pouring in. Okay, maybe not a whole lot of comments have been pouring in and pouring in. It's really just been my mom texting me saying, hey, what are you going to do about the garage door? So, I, I, that's what this video is. I'm going to be insulating the garage door. Now, this is not a reactionary, oh, I've got to do something. I have always intended on insulating the garage door because it's... Don't worry about that. But I didn't want this video to just be, hey, I'm just going to put insulation in the garage door. I figured it would be a little bit more compelling if I were to take some before and after readings on what the change was over the course of, you know, what it is before, what it is after. So I figure we'll just go full Mythbusters on this, take some data points, write it all down, and at the end of this video, I'll post it up on the screen so you can see what the results are of my Mythbuster style experiment. So, without any further ado, we're gonna reject your reality and substitute our own. Let's do science. All right, so the insulation that I'm gonna be putting in my garage door is this kit that is made by Owens Corning, and it's got the Pink Panther right there on the box. It's gonna be an R8 value, which you can see also right here on the box. Uh, I bought this from Home Depot with my own money. I'm not sponsored by Owens Co. Owen, blah, blah, blah. Owens Corning or by Home Depot. The one box kit is designed for a single car garage door. I have a two car garage, so I have two boxes. The cost of both kits combined plus you know, shipping and all this stuff was right about $190, I think, after taxes. Uh, I didn't have any shipping because I went to the store and picked it up. But anyway, so I will have the link to this particular kit in the description down below if you want to purchase this. There are other kits that you can get out there. All that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over a lot of the logistics of the space that I'm insulating, the numbers and stuff that I'm doing, how I'm doing all the testing at the end of this video. So you're going to want to stick around after I do all the installation of the insulation once we get to that point. But in the meantime, we've got montage mode to get to. Let's do it.
Hey, yo. Did you, uh, tell them about the website yet? I just made a whole big new batch of rub. No. I haven't done that yet. I've, um, been a little busy. Well, are you gonna? Because my room's getting awfully crowded with all that inventory you got stashed in there. Oh, your room. Your room in my house that I let you live in rent-free because you were a moron who burned your trailer down. My brother, have I told you how wonderful and generous and magnanimous you are? You know, you're looking awfully slim, buddy. That t-shirt looks mighty fine on you, I must say. Uh-huh. You can walk away now. Yeah, no, I'm gonna go right now, because, you know, I, I'm gonna go clean that kitchen, because I just made a big old mess. Yeah, okay. Oh, right, I see. He's not wrong, though. You should definitely check out our website. We do have shirts, project plans, barbecue rub, all kinds of cool stuff over there. But sales pitch over. We're about... A little over halfway done, and this is going a lot more smoothly than I thought it would. Uh, I might be going a little bit overkill with the, the scrub brush and the 409, but I wanted to get a little bit of degreaser on the surface of the uh, thing. The instructions don't say to do that. I'm just doing that because I'm you know, retentive and paranoid, and I just, you know, a clean surface adheres things much better than a dirty surface, and I'd rather it stick to the actual surface panel rather than the dirt that's on the surface panel, but to each their own. Um, cutting this is very easy. I'm just using one of these uh, DeWalt utility blades that just, you know, extends all the way out. You can use whatever type of utility blade you have. The DeWalt one is just the one that I have. But let me bring you in here a little bit and you can actually get a closer look at what uh, these things actually look like. Okay, so on the ones on the far side, you can see there's the recess that I had to kind of cut around, but on my door, these panels here are flush, so I just cut it right up to it, but there is a recess up top here and a little bit of a recess down here, and I didn't have any problem just kind of forcing it down in there, and it just went in no problem, and it seems to be staying, and the teeth on this just kind of go, well, here, the one that's up on the wall, is, will that focus? Hang on, focus. Focus. Like that. And then the other one just comes in like Jaws style and they just kind of scissor together. That's going to be dirty and that's okay, but you know, get your mind out of the gutter and focus on the fact that I'm trying to help you if you're going to do this in the future. And then they go in and they just click into place. You got one in here, and I was using a level because, again, I'm anal retentive and I want it to be as even to the mind's eye. And again, I'm doing this because on video, I'm going to want to see it from a distance and just, you know, do you have to use a level? No. Does it add that little bit of extra? Of course it does. Let's get back to work because we're kind of in the home stretch here. Well, that was fun. Uh, it was not nearly as much work as I thought it would be. It was just a lot of repetitive stuff. Cutting the insulation and putting it up there went very, very easy. Once you kind of get the hang of manipulating the full sheets of fiberglass and it just itches, it's a pain in the butt. A couple of days have gone by since I put it up and I just wanted to let it acclimate and do some actual testing. So. All that being said, here's some logistics of how I've done this testing. I have run the air conditioner at a medium fan speed on 75 degrees 
for a couple of days before uh, I did the testing and I took some temperatures and I'll have the full sheet on the screen right now and I'll also have it in a PDF that you can, uh, for free, that you can click to link on my website and you can go and download it and peruse it at your leisure if you like. Or you could just freeze frame and look at it now if you like. However you want to do it. Anyway, the long and the short of it is insulating the garage door, whether you have an air conditioning or not, is definitely worth it. There are three and four degree temperature differences throughout the course of the days. Now, unfortunately, I did not do this test within enough time to get this video out. I wanted to have a couple of days with it in before I was able to, uh, how am I trying to say this? I wanted to have a couple of days worth of data points with the insulation fully in and the AC on to collect data points before I published the video, but I just ran out of time because there were thunderstorms that came through because, you know, I live in Florida and it's, you know, just the nature of things. I also wanted to be able to, hindsight being what it is, wish I'd have done this test in the middle of summer as opposed to now, which right now it is the middle of September. Not the most ideal time for testing insulation when you live in Florida. However, it is what it is. The numbers are just going to have to be what they are. If you want to see what the numbers are through over the course of time, follow me over on Instagram and I'm going to keep continuing these tests with insulation numbers over the course of the next several months and just also what it does to my electric bill and things like that. So follow me over on Instagram, just at Big Lou's Workshop. Uh, my shop is 400 square feet. It's a 20 by 20. The garage door faces north by northwest. And for all you truly geeky guys, it's 340 degrees north by northwest. That's the way that the garage door faces. Two of the f uh, exterior walls are uh, drywall and brick. They are uninsulated. The ceiling is uninsulated. It's a vaulted ceiling. So those are all of the statistics about the, the shop. The biggest statistic that I can show is that uh, during the heat of the day at 3 o'clock, the uninsulated uh, door with the AC off was 87 degrees. And the insulated door with the AC off was a temperature difference of right about five degrees. And that to me was huge. That's with the air conditioner off. So even if you don't have an air conditioning in your shop and you want to reduce the heat in your garage, I think it's definitely worth it. So that is all that I got to say about this, folks. Is it expensive? It's par for the course. It depends on how much time you're actually going to be spending in your shop. I think for where I live, the amount of heat that I have is definitely worth it. If you live in cold climates, I think this is absolutely worth it. I think it will definitely keep the heat in in the winter. But I don't live in a cold climate, so I really can't say. I would love for people in the colder climates that don't have uh, climate control in their shop to do similar tests and tag me in it either on Instagram or here on YouTube and see what kind of results we get because I love this type of data collection stuff. That's where we have the results on this, folks. I think this was a, a lot of fun. Uh, the thermometer test is always fun to just point and shoot infrared thermometer readings and things. I'm going to get started on the next project because I still have a lot of work to do here in the shop. I've got a lot of fun projects, so you're going to want to make sure that you get subscribed. Like we were saying earlier, go ahead, check out the website, pick yourself up a t-shirt, pick yourself up some barbecue rub or some project plans and things like that. In the meantime, stay motivated, stay inspired, and stay safe. We'll see you next time.